Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to using the new style SQL Alchemy queries in Flask SQL Alchemy. So you can do this in plain SQL Alchemy, of course, but I'm going to show you how it works with the Flask SQL Alchemy extension. And before I get into that, I just want to mention that if you need help with anything in your Flask project, so Flask SQL Alchemy, these new queries, or even the old queries, you can reach out to me. I have something called the coaching program where I work with people one on one and I can help you solve any problems that you may have. So if you're interested, just go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching, or you can click on the link in the description below. So now let's get started with everything here. Uh, first, I wanna show you the database that I have. So uh, SQLite 3 instance, uh, DB Lite SQLite 3. And I have one table called user, and I have four users in the database. So Anthony, Pretty Printed, Flask user, and Herbert, those are my four users here. I just wanted to show you that uh, before I started writing the queries. So here in the code, I have this one user model. It has an ID and name, so pretty simple. And now I want to start up the shell. So the shell is where I'm going to write all the queries. So let me just make this a bit bigger so it's more clear and clear everything out. So I want to show you first the most basic query that you probably write all the time in your apps. So user.query.all. So this will give you all the users in the database. So this is the old style query. It uses the model first, and then you do dot .query and dot .all. And this is actually a feature of Flask SQL Alchemy. It adds the ability to query off of the models. In plain SQL Alchemy, this was never a thing. You always had to use the database session, but in Flask SQL Alchemy, they let you get away with just doing this. And I actually like this approach because oftentimes you're only querying from one model. So might as well just put the queries on the model directly. But in the new style, if you wanna write the equivalent query, what you would do is you would start with the DB object. So, you know, when you instantiate SQL Alchemy here, you have the DB object. You would do db.session. And this should be familiar because you need to use this when you're adding something to the database and committing. So that's the same in both styles. Um, but if you want to run this, you do db.session and then execute. And then inside of execute, you need to have some kind of statement that you want to run. So the statement is, I want to select everything uh, from users. So db.select, so select is a new function in the new style of SQL Alchemy. And then the model that I want to select from is user. And then I need to do something called scalars. And I already messed up because there are so many parentheses here. So I need a, a closing paren after uh, db select. So one for user, one for db select. And then scalars, you know what? Let me show you this without scalars. So here, I get this uh, chucked iterator results. And if I do dot all, I see I have my four users here, right? But if you notice, they're a little bit weird. So I have four things here, but they're tuples. And each user is inside of a tuple, and then it's just one item in each tuple. So this would be a little annoying to get. So for example, if I wanted the first user, I would go zero, and then zero like this. And it gives me the first user. So this is kind of uh, clunky to use. So what you would use instead, uh, let me go back to what I had. Um, so instead of execute like that, you can do dot scalars and then dot all. So now when I run this, I get the equivalent query. So just to recap, let me clear everything out. The original way is user dot query dot all. The new style is this one. Now, because a lot of people want to use the scalar version of the result, meaning they want the actual data, they don't really care about the row representation from SQL Alchemy, uh, there is a shortcut. So you can do db.session.scalers instead of execute and then put the statement inside of scalars. So I can do db.select and then user, close that out and then do dot all. So it's a little bit shorter and it gives you the same thing. So that's how you would do all in the new style of queries. Now let's say you want the first thing. So if I do user.query.first, I can get the first user. And of course you can put like a filter on there if you want but this is the easiest way to get the very first user in the table. If I want to do the equivalent in the new style, I would do db.session, and I'm going to use scalars from now on instead of execute. So db.session.scalars, and then db select, and then the user model. And then from there, I can do dot first, and then I get the same thing. All right, so now what if you want to do like a filter by? So you can do user query uh, filter by name equals, let's say pre printed here. So I can do this and do dot first, and that will give me user two. That is the user would pre-print it as the name. If I want to do that in the new style, what I would do is db.session.scalers, 
and then DB select the name of the model again, so user. And then I could put a filter by in here and then do name equals pretty, pretty printed, if I can spell that properly. And then I can do dot first. And then I just need to make sure I have the parentheses correct. So there are two closing parentheses after pretty printed. Do that and I get user two. So that's the equivalent version of filter by. So now let's say I want to use just a filter instead of filter by. So let me clear this out and I can do user query filter. And then I can do something like user name does not equal uh, Anthony. So I want all the users except for Anthony. So I can do a dot all on this and I get users two through four. To write this same query using the new style, I can do db.session.scalers, uh, db select, and then the user model again. And then instead of using filter, I will use where. So now I can do user.name does not equal Anthony, and then close this out properly and do dot all on the end, and then I get the same result. So users two through four. Okay, so for something that isn't so long, if I wanna get a user by ID, so let's say I wanna get the fourth user. So user query get number four. So I want the user with uh, the primary key of four. So that gives me user four. To do that in the new style, I can do db.session.get, and then I can pass in the name of the model, so user, and then the number, so four, and it gives me user four. So finally, the last type of query I want to show you is a count. So before you can do user query counts, and then now you can do db.session.scalar. So instead of scalars, you're just doing scalar because you're going to get one number in return and only one number. So just scalar. And then you want to use the count function. So db.function, so f-u-n-c, then counts. And then you can't count the user model directly. You have to count a field on the user model. So we can count the number of unique IDs. And then just close that out. And we get the number four. So those cover like the most common queries that you'll be writing. Of course, you can extend them to have more on them, but uh, those are the basic queries that you would write in any Flask SQL Alchemy app. And I just wanted to show you those because that's the direction that SQL Alchemy is heading and by extension, Flask SQL Alchemy because it's based off SQL Alchemy. Now, the good news is, is that the old API will always be supported because it's just been around for like over 10 years now, maybe like 15 years. However old SQL Alchemy is, it's been around for that long. So it's not going anywhere. So if you want to use the old version, you can. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the new style because that is the direction that the library is going to be heading in the future. So for me personally, I think I'm going to continue using the old style. I just like the API so much better. I feel like the new style is so much longer to get the same thing done. And although I'm sure there are benefits to the new style, for me, I just don't see them. So I'm going to continue to use the old style. And I want to know what you're going to do. So are you going to continue to use the old style of queries or do you want to use the new style in your apps? And if you're using the new style in your apps, are you going to use the new style of models as well? Because there is another way of writing models that isn't quite like this. It uses Python type hints to create the columns instead of setting them up like this. And that's something I can show you in another video if you're interested in that as well. So let me know in the comments, uh, do you like the new style? Do you like the old style? Um, are you gonna go all the way with the new style if you do prefer the new style queries? Just let me know in the comments. So that's all I want to show you in this video, uh, just in case you didn't know the direction that SQL Alchemy was going. If you have any questions about anything I covered in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.